Hey guys, welcome back for a new video. Hope you are doing well. It's February. 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 Which means it's time to start preparing the birds for a new breeding season. This year I made some changes to the bird gallery and my approach. I will only breed 4 different pairs of birds and of course my golden finches which are kept in the colony. I won't increase my flock this year because I've got some big plans. If you follow my live streams on more Mr. Aviary, you already know what it is. So if you want to know these things first, tune into the Let's Talk About Birds live streams. In this video, I will go over 5 simple tips you need to keep in mind to increase your breeding success. Still, your specific situation is always different than mine. So keep that in mind and use these tips to your advantage and adjust them according to your situation. This video is a little longer than my other videos, but stay tuned because the last tip will be the most important one. Tip 1. A good start. Before my breeding season, I always start with a good cleanup and some preparations with my birds. Do a big, big cleanup. Clean everything in the cage and spray the whole thing with anti-lice and mite spray. Do this before you start with your breeding season because every big cleanup will stress out your birds and you want to limit the stress for your birds as much as possible during the breeding season. That doesn't mean you don't clean it up, but less disturbing. In my case, during the breeding season I only quickly clean the drawers. This removes most of the feces but will not stress the birds. I won't go in and clean all the walls or spray all the plants just to keep the amount of stress to a minimum. Next, I also do a quick checkup of every bird. For example, these owl finches. I check their general health and if necessary ring them to know which one is the male. I also clip each bird's nails and spray them with anti-lice and mite spray. Same as the big cleanup, catching and handling your birds in this way gives a lot of stress which you don't want during the breeding season. These are important steps, as you don't want any lice or mites on your birds and long nails can cause infertile eggs due to the male hurting the female during mating or the female isn't able to keep a good hold on the perch during mating. You don't want to find this out during the breeding season because the stress of handling your birds can stop their mating behavior. And the last thing to do to have a good start is medication. I'm not a big fan of a lot of pre-medication. So I always only treat my birds with apple cider vinegar. This is a more natural product, good for a healthy digestive system and a boost in their immune system. However, this will not work if you have a strong virus or bacterial outbreak, but it will definitely help. However, if your species of birds is prone to particular diseases, it's good to pre-medicate them beforehand. But be aware, medication can have a profound effect on your birds which you don't want during the breeding season and it can mess up the whole breeding conditions of your bird and in some cases even cause infertility. So if you do pre-medicate, do this beforehand and research the pre-medication before use. Apple cider vinegar on the other hand is when dosed dried, less aggressive so can be used the whole year round. Maybe you can see this as 3 tips, but this was only tip 1. They always say, well begun is half done. Then it's time to get your birds into breeding conditions. And I got a couple of tips to keep in mind. The next tips have one thing in common. They are to mimic nature as much as possible. Starting with light. Depending on how far from the equator your birds originate, light can be a very important cue. An increase in light hours is very important in, for example, native European finches. My finches originate from Africa and Australia. Here the difference between summer and winter is less present. However, for all species it is important to have at least 12 hours of daylight. This is a cue for the birds that there is enough time to find food for their chicks. So you can keep the daylight at around 12 hours for the whole year or slowly increase it towards 12 hours before the breeding season. Next, temperature. But before I explain temperature, let me show you the birds which I will try to breed this year. Starting with the tricolored parrot finches. Last year we didn't have much success and switched meals. The new pair mated right away, resulting in fertile eggs. Unfortunately, it was late in the season and the female stopped incubating them. Hopefully, we will have some more success this year. 
Going down one cage we have the Alfinches. Very successful last year so let's hope we can match that. Going to the right, the Chestnut Breasted Mannequins. Last year not even eggs. However they were pretty young so hopefully this year we will have some more success. I know I have at least one male but we still have to see if it's a pair. In the last breeding cage are the society finches. Last year no success due to probably a calcium deficiency. She only laid eggs with no shell. I'm giving them one more opportunity otherwise I will look for a new pair or switch partner. They will get some extra calcium this year. Going to the other side we have the indoor aviary with a wild colored pair of button quills. Those are not the only pair I've kept for this breeding season. I also have a wild colored female left and I will try to breed with a new couple this year. A golden pearl male and a cinnamon female. Hopefully this year is as successful as last year. The first eggs are already laid. And last of course the golden finches. They just went through a mite outburst but are recovering. I also already found two eggs so it seems that some of them are ready for the breeding season. Back to tip 3, the right temperature. Same as for light, increasing temperatures can be a cue for the birds that it's time for the breeding season. However, make sure you slowly increase the temperature in your bird room. A big shift can cause severe health problems. I always breed my birds with a temperature between 18 and 22 degrees Celsius. You can breed your birds with lower temperatures, but then they are more prone to get sick or have problems, for example egg line. So be aware of that. Tip 4. Humidity. Most bird owners know that it's important to keep their birds warm. But many don't realize how important it is to pay attention to the humidity levels in their bird environment. First of all, humidity plays an important role in helping to keep your bird healthy and happy. The first benefit is that it helps them to maintain their skin and feathers. Another way that humidity can benefit a bird is by helping to prevent respiratory problems. However, humidity is also important for the breeding season. Eggs need a particular humidity level to hatch correctly. Most birds will regulate this, but you can help them by creating the right humidity in the bird room by spraying the cages down every day or using an electric humidifier. Providing the birds with water to bathe in can also help the birds to get the right humidity level in the nest. Especially for the African and Australian finches, humidity is also an important cue that the breeding season is arriving. Higher humidity level means that the rainy season begins. This will cause grass seeds to sprout and an increase in food availability. Talking about food, the most important tip is tip number 5, proper food. In nature, food gets more abundant and a larger variety of foods can be found during the breeding season. This is a cue for the birds that there will be enough food for the chicks. You can mimic this by increasing the variety of seeds. During winter they get their basic mix and I will slowly increase the variety by adding another seed mixture, millet seed and sprouted seeds. Other important aspects of foods are vitamins and minerals. Birds in the wild have a big variety of foods to get everything they need. So going into the breeding season I supplement my food with soft egg food. This egg food contains extra protein and extra minerals and vitamins. To make this egg food I use one egg, dry biscuits, some vegetables, in this case broccoli, spinach and kale, some extra supplements and also some dry egg food to finish it. Make sure your egg food is relatively dry and not sticky. I've noticed that the bird accept it a lot less when it's sticky. Protein is really important during the breeding season. This is of course provided by the egg food we just made. To provide some extra proteins, I will also slowly increase the amount of mealworms. Some birds, like for instance my alfinches, prefer mealworms over egg food. So it's always good to experiment and see what kind of food your birds like. One of the most important vitamins during the breeding season is vitamin E, because this is good for fertility. 
That's why I use a lot of green vegetables like kale, broccoli and spinach because they contain a lot of vitamin, especially vitamin E, but also calcium. Some people don't want to give spinach to their birds because it contains oxalate, which binds to calcium and prevents absorption. However, since there's more calcium than oxalate in spinach, there's calcium left after absorption. So birds will actually get a bit of calcium from spinach. But to be sure, I always use only a few leaves because spinach is still very good for your birds. Every week I switch the vegetables inside my egg food to get a good mix of vitamins and nutrients. Another supplement that is stated to be very good for vitamin E is wheat germ oil. I've never used it myself, but I know a lot of breeders who swear by this product. Last, calcium. Calcium is very important for your birds. Egg shell is mostly made out of calcium. Therefore, to create an egg, a female bird needs enough calcium. To increase calcium intake, birds must always have access to grit, which I also top off with sapia, containing calcium, zinc and iron. But you can also use liquid calcium, like Calcilux inside the drinking water. This way you are more certain the birds really take it in. As I mentioned before, there's also a good calcium content in green vegetables. Last, I also used some extra sub. Because last year wasn't a success, I've switched to Versele Lage supplements. So this year I'm trying out OptiBreed for an increase in regular vitamins and minerals, OmniFit especially for fertility and the breeding season, a Mutafit to get that extra boost during the molt and last, like mentioned before, apple cider vinegar to give their immune system a boost. We'll see if this increases our success this year. These are my sort of 5 tips to increase your success in breeding your birds. Let me know in the comments how your breeding season is going and if you maybe have another tip you want to share with us. Hope you liked this video, if so click that like button and consider subscribing. And don't forget to check out my second channel. See you in the next video and remember to stay happy and always love your birds. Bye bye!